All right, perfect. All right, so you can see that it's recording? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Hello, welcome. Oh, yes, make sure you go and change your, your options in the chat from all panelists to all panelists and attendees. Yeah, I tried a few times to straighten the sword out and I just couldn't, it, it just wouldn't stay. So um, it could have something to do with the fact that I tried after I'd painted it in the brown liner. So he's just the demonstration to show uh, which miniature to use. Pardon me, don't forget to hydrate. Even if you're not in an in-person convention, hydration is important. Yes, the fancy new sickle broadsword. Hello, Michael from Indiana. Where is everybody else from? Oh, I am in Eastern Washington. Uh, it's quite dry here, so. The nice part about that is that paint dries really quickly. The downside is that uh, wet blending is not something that uh, has been very successful for me. So let's see, we've got Tennessee, Minnesota, Rochester, nice. Ohio, Virginia. It's always fun to see uh, if there are people from other, there's a, I've a few times seen people from other countries that have, have been in class. I'm like, oh, that's so exciting because that wouldn't be possible. Uh, or it would at least be significantly harder um, and an in-person convention. So that is that is one of the benefits of this format is um, people from all over can attend. Next is Australia, nice. Oh, Western Washington, hello neighbor. Massachusetts, near Boston. Lovely. Norway, welcome. That's exciting. All right, so I'm going to give uh, about two to three minutes after the hour uh, for people to, to come in, get settled, get their materials together. Oh, uh, shoot, I don't remember the brand name. Impudent Mortal. That's right, Impudent Mortal. I don't remember if they still sell them or not. But uh, yeah, these are actually supposed to hang on the wall, but uh, I got them when we were living in an apartment and drilling holes in the wall was kind of frowned upon. And so I needed something that had a small footprint that could sit on my desk. So, yep, these, uh, you, you would think that this would be a sufficient uh, paint storage option. You don't see the like four or five other bins and boxes that have the overflow paints. In them. Yeah, yeah, holes in the wall. And then, you know, people get creative with what they fill those holes with when they move. So, yeah, lots and lots of, of sticky hooks, those 3M hooks. So, all right. So, give a couple more minutes. Oh, don't worry, Kyle, you are not late. I was just waiting uh, another minute or two before we get started properly. So, um, you know, here's kind of some stuff to get started. If you have not already uh, painted your figure in a dark brown or black, uh, go ahead and get started on that now. If you already have, then you are ahead of the game. Oh, uh, would you be able to get the faction survey up, my moderator? A little poll. Oh, wait, no, it's up. I I don't know how to make it display on your end, but uh, if you look in the little bar where um, the different options are, 
I think you can click on polls. Oh, come on, we need more Rugtarki. Represent. All right. Well, we will go ahead and get started. So welcome to a Beginner's Guide to Metallic Paints. So this class is intended for you know, people who have very little painting, previous painting experience. If you have, you know, if you're more comfortable with painting, you're definitely welcome uh, in class, but you may find some of the things I go over to be things you're already familiar with. You know, you're absolutely welcome to stick around and uh, you know, that is just fine. So first of all, here is a list of the materials that we'll be using in class. Uh, so let me, where are they? So got wash medium and brown liner, steel wash, and filigree silver, dragon gold and dragon copper, go. And drow silver, this is optional. Uh, if you have any colorful metallic, that will work fine. And then a bottle of whatever your favorite color is. I like uh, this kind of purpley blue, but doesn't blue. So that's what I'm using, but you can use whatever color you like. Oh, and blade steel. This one's really important. We're using this one a lot. I'll remember, I'll try to remember not to shake the, <laughs> the bottles too much because that makes it hard to read. And if you do not have those materials, because let's say your order didn't arrive or you're just you know, getting started with painting, you can use, uh, instead of wash medium, you can use water or flow improver, or if you have airbrush medium, that works as well. Do not use airbrush cleaner. That will clean your paints and do terrible things to it. So yeah, don't mix cleaner with your paint. Uh, any dark brown or black, uh, two different silvers, a darker one and a lighter one, any color gold, any copper. And like I said, any colorful metallic, that is optional, but it's something that I'd like to talk a little bit about if we have time. And then if you don't have Garrick the Bold here or Sir Four Scale, any armored figure that's got a sword and a shield will work just fine. So, all right, let me clear this away. Get my palette set up here. And, oh, so what are we covering in class? Let me switch the camera real quick because there's nothing, I'm not gonna be doing anything under the document camera um, right at the beginning here. So. First of all, I'm going to be discussing what metallic paints are because they're a little bit different from regular paints. We're going to discuss dry brushing with metallics, uh, how to thin your metallics, uh, how to layer with metallics, uh, how to shade them with washes, and then using metallics other than silver. Let's see, and I do see a question real quick. I only have one color silver. What's the best way to make a darker one? Just add black. Oh, that is an excellent question. I will cover that in a little bit, okay? So yeah, I will talk about that when we get to the silver portion. Great question. All right, uh, there is a handout available for this class. It's not required for class. Uh, it's in my Discord channel. It's more of a supplemental material for after class. So everything that I discuss in class will be in that handout as well as a little bit more. So you don't need to panic about taking notes and painting and watching all at the same time. And then if you have any questions, please put them in chat. If I'm going too fast, if you don't understand, because I can't, I can't see your face. I can't see, you know, that you're struggling or having trouble. So please let me know. And if you, you know, are still having trouble, I am available on my Discord channel. And, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to, to work with you. Okay cover the materials and the prep. Okay, so now we're going to discuss a few terms that we'll be using in class because they may not be used the same across, you know, between different painters. Actually, I see a question. Oh, okay. There we go. 
I'm going to distract me. Okay. So first of all, a base coat. What is a base coat? A base coat is the very first layer of color that you put onto your miniature. It's usually done after priming. However, there are colored primers that do sort of the same thing. Also, the Reaper liner colors, the black, brown, blue, and the sepia, not so much. That one doesn't work as a primer very well. But anyways, those work quite well as a, both a primer coat and a base coat for bones. So, so our so for skill here, uh, I base coated him in brown liner because that acted as a primer and as my base coat. Um, thinning. I will talk about thinning in this class. So what that is, is mixing some sort of clear, thin medium to your paint to make it uh, easier to work with. That can be water, flow improver, wash medium, uh, air, airbrush medium. Those are all clear, thin acrylic, or, well, there are acrylic mediums except for water. Um, so I do recommend thinning your metallic paints, except when we are dry brushing. And I'll, I'll repeat this when we get to that part, just because metallics especially are a bit thicker than regular paints and it will make it much easier to work with them. So, oh, dry brushing, I mentioned dry brushing. So dry brushing is taking your paint and getting just a little on your brush and then you scrub most of it off onto a paper towel. And we will be going over this in, in just a little bit where you'll get to do it hands-on. And what that does is it leaves just the, the dry pigments left in your brush and just a little tiny bit of moisture. And so then you're able to apply it to your miniature and it gives a different effect from just straight painting it on. Uh, layering is applying multiple thinned layers of paint onto your miniature. Uh, wash. So you'll hear the term wash and glaze sometimes used a little interchangeably. So the way that I have learned it is you've got regular paint and then you have a wash and then you have a glaze and it goes from thickest to thinnest. Should stay in camera. So regular paint, you just use it right out of the bottle. Glaze is almost like paint water. It's like got a little bit of color to it, but it's quite watery and quite thin. So when you paint it onto something, it's translucent. And wash is somewhere in the middle. Uh, I've seen I've used thicker washes and thinner washes depending on what I'm I'm after. So wash is a little bit of a fuzzy term, but it's basically not paint water and not paint right out of the bottle. All right. Uh, true metallic metal is what we will be talking about in class. It is paint with shiny little bits in it. And that is opposed to non-metallic metal, which you may have heard before. Non-metallic metal is a technique where you paint a surface to look metallic without using paint that has shiny bits in it. And both techniques have their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, I find for me personally that true metallic metal paint jobs look better in person and don't photograph very well because of that reflective nature of the paint. Non-metallic metals I find photograph beautifully because it's more of an optical illusion and don't always look quite as good in person because as you, you know, move around and look at different aspects of the figure, the reflection doesn't change as you're looking at it. Your brain goes, oh, it's it's not actually shiny. It just looks shiny if I look at it and it's not moving. So, okay. So that is some of the terms. So what is metallic paint? As I mentioned, metallic paint is a, it's a colored base that has some sort of re reflective flake in it that can be metallic. It's usually mica, I think is what Reaper uses now. Um, I'm not familiar with other, what other paint lines use as far as what, you know, what they use in them to make them reflective, but Reaper, it's mostly mica. And it can be different colors as well. So like, for example, I don't know. Well, you won't be able to see on this camera anyway. So Reaper makes a color called emerald green where the base is green, but the flake in it is gold. So that means you can have some fun, uh, uh, do some fun effects with that. Silvers will usually have silver flake in them. 
but not always. I've noticed that Sadie is having a lot of fun playing with colors with her metallics. The metallics that she made for, for this convention are really pretty. I, I just got mine right before, uh, sorry, the Reaper Virtual Expo. And so I didn't get a chance to like play with them yet, but yeah, I'm excited. Oh yeah, so yeah, there's a huge range of metallic paints beyond just silver and gold. There's copper, there's bronze, there's brass, there's purple, there's yellow, there's blue. So yep, don't have to restrict yourself to just silver and gold. Okay, so that is enough talking for now. Let's do some painting. Let me switch my camera. So to start with, you will need a brush. So uh, for dry brushing, I would recommend an older brush or at least a brush you don't really care about because the more you use your dry brush or your brushes for dry brushing, the more they start to look like this, all frizzled and fuzzy. And yeah, you don't want to use your nice pointy brush for dry brushing. It will make you sad. So I tend to prefer flat brushes for dry brushing. I just find that it makes it a lot easier to just catch the, the very top of what I'm painting. But you can use a regular brush. And let's say you're dry brushing just a little area. You can just use the, the tip or you can use the side of your brush. Um, but I just, I prefer to use a brush that's already nice and flat. You can see I've already used this for dry brushing some because it's getting fuzzy on the sides. So we got our dry brush and we will start with our blade steel and a paint palette. Oh, and a paper towel. It's not in camera, but you'll need a paper towel or something to rub your paint off onto. I would not recommend your cat. They don't usually like that or your child, they, they usually don't like that either. But a paper towel, I've known some people to use like chamois or cloths. Uh, Kleenex might get a little too fuzzy. So I don't know that I'd recommend Kleenex. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we are gonna take our Sir four scale here, and get just a little bit of paint in our palette. The exact amount doesn't matter for this step. Put that there. There we go. Okay, so when you're dry brushing, you want to get paint on just the tips of your bristles. See if you can see that. Just the tips. The reason why is because we're going to end up rubbing most of it off on our paper towel until you can't really see much color coming off. We're going to be dry brushing the chain mail on Sir Four Scale here. So I'm going to start with his leg. So you want to move your, your brush just gently along whatever texture you want to put color onto. Let me change my light just a little bit so you can see him better. There we go. So you can see that not very much color is coming off. So that means that I need to get a little bit more paint. So I go back to my paint puddle here, rub some off and there we go. I've got more color coming off. Let's say I don't rub enough silver off. Um, I'll show you on his, uh, on his elbow here. So I get a little paint and I don't rub off enough. And it's just kind of, oh, I don't know. That's, that's, that's way too much silver. I messed it up. It's ruined forever. No, it's not ruined forever because it's paint and we can paint over it. So what I will do is first rinse my brush off so it doesn't get all crusty. So I base coated Sir Four Scale in uh, my brown liner. So I'll just grab that color again, paint back over it, and it's back to being a blank canvas. It's like a magic eraser. It's wonderful. And you can do this regardless of what color you, you just messed up on. Let's say 
I was painting cloth and accidentally got something on there that I didn't want. I just grabbed my cloth color and go back over it. So we'll just, we'll just erase that. That didn't happen. There we go. And once that dries, then I can go back over with dry brushing my silver. So this class, that's an excellent question. Is this class the same or different as my fun with shiny paints class? This is related. Um, there will be some similarity in content, but this is meant, this is intended more for you know, students that don't have much, if any, painting experience. So I take things a little bit slower and a little bit, uh, you know, I don't get quite as, as out there with, oh, and you can do this and you can do this and you can do this because I want to do that all the time. And it can be a little too overwhelming. So we're just going to keep things a little bit more, more focused in this class. All right. So that should be dry now. So we'll go back to my drawer brush. And oh, so a question that a student had in a previous class is, well, it's called dry brushing. Does that mean you don't rinse your brush out? That's not the case. It just means that, okay, let's say I dry brushed his arms and nothing's really coming off my brush anymore. So let's say I'm done with this color. So I'll, I'll rinse my brush out. Just make sure that you dry it out really well before you dry brush anymore. Okay, so let's see, where else does he have chain mail? Got his right leg and his arms. Oh, there's a little bit on his left leg here. And there's also a little bit up under his neck. Oops, I can see I did not get my brown liner in there very well, but that's okay because just nobody will see it. And it doesn't matter if you're getting silver all over, you know, other places, we will be painting back over those. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you're going to be dry brushing with metallics, I would strongly recommend you do that first because you may or may not have noticed, but it has a tendency to put glitter all over your miniature. Uh, I learned this the hard way because I was, I was almost done painting a figure and then realized that I'd forgotten a section of chain mail. So I'm like, oh, I'll just dry brush it really quick. That led to me spending an hour repainting the cloth around where the chain mail was because it was all sparkly. So, yep, do this first. Okay. So there is the chain mail. So that is dry brushing. Let's say we wanted to highlight our chain mail. You can do that with dry brushing as well. So grab our filigree silver here. is in camera, there we go. And we'll do the same thing we did with the blade steel, except we'll only focus on dry brushing just a little bit of the area. Oh, so actually before we start that, I should talk about light direction. So when you're trying to decide how to highlight anything, not just metallics, think about where your light source is coming from. Most of the time, uh, painters will put the light source somewhere above the miniature's head pointing down. That's because most of our light sources are above us. The sun, uh, ceiling lights, floor lamps, they tend to be above our heads. So it looks much more natural. Uh, when you get into putting light elsewhere, then you can really start having fun with shadows. But most of the time, just putting your light source above your miniature will look just fine. So. A uh, trick that I do to make sure that I'm putting my highlights where they're supposed to be is I'll take my miniature and I'll look at it from the perspective of my light source. What does that see the most? So I can see the top of his arm and the top of that arm there. So that is where I will put my filigree silver. So I'm brushing off just a little bit. So I'll just gently dry brush just a little bit of filigree silver on the top there. What else can we see? I can see the top of this leg just a little bit. So I'll put a little filigree silver on his thigh there. And just on the edge of his chain mill on his left leg. 
just the edge because his shield is shading most of that. Oh, I forgot this side of his thigh. There we go. So there's just a real quick highlight, nothing too fancy, but it makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so I'm gonna pause there a moment, check if there's any questions, concerns, comments, wild speculation. <laughs> because uh, I can't I can't see whether everybody's done or, or is confused or anything. So all right, I don't see any new questions. So all right, I guess I will go on to the next section then. So okay, so we are done with dry brushing. So we're going to take our frizzled dry brush and we're going to set it aside. We're going to grab our nicer brush. Uh, not everybody likes to use really nice brushes with metallics. Um, I think if you are good about cleaning your brush and rinsing it out, it's not a big problem as, unless you're gooping your metallic onto your brush. So, oh, do you have to use water to thin the metallics? I'm actually just about to talk about that, Dale. So hang in there. We'll, we'll get there in just a moment. So, yeah, so I, I mean, so this is just a, a cheap brush because I, I, this is what I use for most of my, uh, my just, uh, work, this is my workhorse brush. And then I've got a, uh, a pointier brush for my detail stuff. It's a bit fuzzy because I haven't cleaned it recently. Yeah, normally it points a little better, but anyways. So yeah, we're moving on to a, a non dry brush brush. Okay. so. Thinning metallics. So we are, so I like to use reverse wash medium to thin my metallics because it's a little bit thicker than water. And I find that it helps to keep the, the metallic flake uh, in the, uh, called what the words in solution. It keeps them suspended in the paint a little bit better. I found that if I use water to thin my metallics, you know, I, I mix the water in then after a while that flake starts to settle out of my paint. So if you're just going to be, you know, it, if you're a painter that prefers to mix water and paint on your brush as you go, it's probably fine. I know James Wapple does that and you know, he has no problems with doing that. I'm lazy and I like to mix all my paint puddles to start with. And uh, so I, I like to use wash medium. You can also use flow improver. I, I find that this is thinner than, than the wash medium. It's a little bit closer to water. Uh, I would not recommend Reaper's brush on sealer just because you can see, I haven't shaken this bottle up in a little bit, but there's this, this white material at the bottom. That is a matting agent. And so the brush on sealer is more of a satin sealer. And so it makes things a little bit less shiny, which, you know, is the opposite of what you want usually for your metallics. So I would not recommend, unless you're looking for a more of an interestingly satin look, then by all means, you know, go for it. But most of the time I would not recommend this. A gloss sealer I find won't really thin your paints. Uh, at least for, for me, it doesn't, it might be because my bottle's a little bit older, but, uh, I don't find that it, that it thins them, but it does help them to stay really glossy. So if I want to a really high gloss to my metallics, then I might use this, or I might go back over it later with a gloss sealer. So, uh, Q and A is wash medium the same as matte medium? No, they are very different. Uh, let me pull out some matte medium. Actually, I've not used this in a while. So this is a Vallejo matte medium, and yeah. I'd, I think I need to replace this bottle. I don't use it very often. So matte medium makes things very not shiny, uh, which will have an odd effect on your metallics. I've tried using uh, even just Reaper's brush on sealer over my metallics and it really dulls them down quite a bit. So yeah, I would not recommend uh, matte medium. Matte medium and wash medium are different. Wash medium is much thinner and it's a, uh, 
Yeah, it's just they they are not the same thing. Okay, good question. Okay, so we talked about thinning metallics, and uh, the ratio that I usually use is two drops of paint to one drop of medium. However, this formula can change depending on which paint line you're using and the age of the paint that you're using. Older Older uh, bottles will thick will be thicker, and also different paint lines will be thicker. For example, scale seventy five paints are quite thick, whereas reverse metallics tend to be fairly thin out of the bottle. So you may find that you need to play with that formula a little bit to get your metallic to play nicely with you. Okay, so we're going to stick with our blade steel, and we're going to be painting the armor on his left leg. So two drops of my blade steel, one drop of my wash medium. And I know some painters like to use the, an old brush to mix their paints. I use the end of my paintbrush. I used to use toothpicks, which it, it takes about as much time as you can imagine, but it's what I had at the time. And then one day I didn't have toothpicks and I was like, well, I'll, I'll try the end of my brush. And that worked out nicely. So, okay. So we're painting the armor on his right leg. And you will notice, I don't know if my camera will really pick this up. Yeah, yeah, let me get some color on here so you can see. He's got these, these, metal, these plates to his armor. So if you can, try to leave a dark line in between each section of armor plating. If you can't manage that, that is just fine. We will be adding those back in at a later stage. So if you can, leave those lines. And if not, it's OK. This calf here. Like I guess that that's his shin. Excuse me, this calf is back here. And his foot. And there's a little plate over the top of his foot as well. And just, now remember, if you mess up, just let it dry and paint back over it with your base paint, with your base coat paint. And nobody will ever know. And guess what? Everybody makes mistakes. I've watched quite a few professional painters have to, you know, go back and forth and tidy things up. And I give you 100% permission to make mistakes. There we go. You can see. So. I mostly left the, the lines in between the armor plates. I got a little messy between this one, but that's okay because we will be fixing that later. So, all right, well, everybody's working on that. Let me check the chat and see what's going on. Looks like everybody's busy painting. Wonderful. So I should let you know, we won't have time to, to paint all of Sir Forest Scale in this class. Uh, we'll just be painting portions of him. Actually, that area under his neck is bothering me. I'm just gonna tidy that up. There we go. Yeah, I did not follow my own advice and wash this miniature very well before. And so it's been causing a little bit of paint adhesion problems. So you can see where the paint's rubbing off of his sword. That's because I didn't wash my miniature before and I did not have the time. There we go. So yeah, if you find that you're having problems with paint rubbing off, it might be because Either there's a little bit of mold release left 
on your miniature or because it's been handled a lot and oils from your finger have gotten on them. So if you have a miniature that you've been using for gaming that hasn't been painted yet, uh, I would recommend washing it off before you start painting it. Okay. Well, that is the blade steel. Let's see. Okay, I think we're probably ready to move on here. And the nice thing is that this class is being recorded. So if you fall behind or need to step away for some reason, you can always watch it back later and get caught back up. Okay, so next we are going to switch over to our dragon gold. We're gonna make his sword dragon gold. So there's my two drops of dragon gold and my one drop of wash medium. Now I have found that the dragon gold usually needs at least two coats for good coverage. It's a wonderful metallic. It's one of my favorites, but it is a little bit, uh, it just needs a, a couple coats to look good. Whereas the blade steel, one, one coat is usually sufficient. Although I will go back and tidy it up some. Okay, so it's my dragon gold. And, you know, that's a little bit too much paint on my brush. So I'll either wipe it off on my paper towel or on the side of my palette. I've seen other painters use, you know, their thumb or their thumbnail, whatever you're comfortable with. And just, we're just going to make the sword blade gold for now. Uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and paint the hilt but we'll not be focusing on that in this class. Oh, something else to remember is once you've put the first coat of paint down, let it dry before you do anything else with it. Because if the paint is only partially dry, if you go back over it, it will start to lift that paint off. So if you're really having problems with it not covering well, just let it dry for, for a minute or a few minutes if you live someplace very humid. And uh, then continue on. After I've gotten this sword base coated, I will go back to, there was a question earlier of how do I make a, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Oh, so speaking of not having paint dry enough, you can see how my gold is starting to get kind of brownish. That's because the brown liner I just put on wasn't sufficiently dry. And so my brush was starting to, to pick it back up. So I'll let it dry for a minute before I put my next coat on. Oh, and I see that there is a question. Let's see. Do I usually prefer using dry palettes or wet palettes when painting? Most of the classes I've seen this weekend are using wet palettes. That is an excellent question. So uh, I usually use wet palettes for my, uh, my regular paints because I, I like to have a little bit more control over how thinned my metallic paints get. And so you know, I tend to leave paints in my, my wet palette for multiple days. And I found that when I do that with my metallics, the water will start to seep into the metallic paint and it will, just, it will thin it more than, I'm, than I want. So for metallics, I will use a, just a weld palette, especially since I do a lot of mixing with my metallics. And I just find that, that weld palettes are, are easier for mixing. However, I would say, try either one, see what works for you. If you're more, if you are more comfortable using a wet palette, then you know, try it and see whether it works for you. Oh yes, I totally meant, meant to um, pre-shade my gold with my brown liner. Uh, wet blending, yes. <laughs> so okay so let, oh yep you can see i got brown liner in my my dragon gold over here so i'll just i'll just pull from the other side of this puddle here so teachers make mistakes too live on the air remember just cover it up nobody will know it's just between us right 
There we go. And to make this really look nice, I would probably give it another two or three coats, but that will do for now. So while that is drying, let me go back to making a darker metallic. So I wasn't planning on getting into mixing until a little bit later, but that is fine. So let's say I've only got uh, my filigree silver here and I want to, I need a darker metallic than this. So I will take my brown liner in this case. I like brown liner because it's a, it's a dark brownish black. And I find that it's just nice because it's a, it's a, it's like a very warm black. So I take my filigree silver and let's start with three drops of that because dark colors really like to take over whatever you mix them into. So I put just a little bit of brown liner in, let's say one drop to start with. And let's see what that results in. Oh, that is a very dark silver. You can see it made a very dark gray silver. So that, that might be a little bit darker than I want. So then I go back and add more filigree silver. And you do that, you keep mixing back and forth. And sometimes you end up with a giant puddle of paint and you realize, you know, I, you know, even though it took me a while to get to that mixture, now I know the ratio that I wanted. So, okay, so that's, that's more the color that I wanted. So you can, uh, let's say you want to lighten a metallic. So you would take your metallic and uh, I would not use white, white is, funny. Um, I wasn't planning on getting into this, but it's an important thing to talk about. Let me grab a fresh palette here. So the thing about white is it's a fairly large pigment as far as the, the size goes. So let me grab some pure white here. The problem with white is it's because it's big, it tends to cover up the shiny metallic bits in your paint. So, yeah, sorry, my paint bottles are all dirty. So there's my pure white and my filigree silver. Actually, let's use blade steel because it's already kind of a darker silver. That was, I'm gonna end up with a giant puddle, but it's easier to see. So as I mix it, I don't know if the camera is really picking it up, but all my shiny kind of disappeared. The white just completely ate it up. It's, it's a little bit sparkly. You know, you can see there's a little bit of sparkle left, but it's mostly just kind of gray looking. So when I want to lighten metallics, I will use, get the <laughs> silver off my thumb. So Reaper doesn't, um, I guess the closest that Reaper has currently in production is filigree silver, but it has a little bit of gray in it. Um, I like to use Vallejo's metal medium or Pro Acryl also makes a metal medium. And these are basically just a clear base with, my, with sparkle, with sparkle, <laughs> with flake in them. So it's literally just shiny in a bottle. I love this stuff. And I, I, would, I keep hoping that Reefer will make something like it. I know that Sadie has been working on something like that, but uh, yeah, so I use a Vallejo Metal Medium and I can type that in my channel later. Yeah, I, I did not include that in the required uh, materials for this class, just because I wanted to stick with Reaper as much as possible. So but yeah, I use metal medium a lot when I'm mixing with my metallic paints. Uh, pearl white will work. The, the thing with pearl white is it's a, it's more of a pearlescent also. So the, the base is white and the flake in it is white. And so it'll make your paint a little shimmery, which if that's what you're going for, you know, that's awesome. But 
uh, it, it won't be, it won't read as super shiny metallic the way it will if, if you use a metal medium. So if you don't have anything else, pearl white will work, but it won't be quite as shiny. Okay, well, I've allowed myself to get totally sidetracked. These are good sidetracks, but uh, if we want to finish during our class, then uh, we'll have to move on here. Oh, thank you for mentioning Sophie Silver. So, okay, real quick. So Sophie Silver is a limited edition paint that uh, has only been released for a couple of Reaper cons. Sophie Silver is actually pretty comparable to the Vallejo metal medium. I've, I've played around with both of them and they behave quite similarly. So if you've got Sophie Silver, then that will do just the same thing. Okay, uh, let's see a question. I don't have Jalo Silver and I'm not sure what shade it is. It looks purplish silver. Any suggestions of possible substitutes? So the Drow Silver is completely optional. It's just uh, to show you, oh, actually, let's see. Actually, that's, that's the next step. So let's talk about Drow Silver. So I just wanted to include a bottle of a pre-mixed colored metallic just to show you that, you know, metallics come in all different colors. So if you have Drow Silver or any colored metallic, go ahead and grab that. And for those that don't have a colored metallic, I will show you how to mix one. Let's see. So again, the thing about mixing your own metallics is white is sneaky and it hides in a lot of colors, even colors you wouldn't necessarily suspect. Uh, Reaper's clear paints are actually wonderful for mixing because they only have one or two pigments. Ooh, here we go. So if you have uh, any of the Reaper clears, they work well. Acrylic inks also work well, though you have to do some playing around to find a ratio that works well. Or if you have, I know that uh, other lines make like a, a translucent or transparent colors, those work as well. So, Let's see, let's do three drops of the clear purple and one drop of the filigree silver. If you have your draw silver, you can use that. We are going to make his shield shiny purple. So I'll mix this up and it'll make a pretty close approximation actually. So, you can see that's actually pretty close. So three drops of Reaper clear purple to one drop of filigree silver will get you pretty close to draw silver. And we'll just paint his shield shiny purple. And don't worry too much about the little design on his shield. If we have time at the end, we can Go ahead and pick that out in another color, but that's also something that you could do on your own. And you could either use a metallic or not. You can use gold or silver or green or teal or a different shade of purple. Okay, and then once you're done with that, we're gonna take our dragon copper and paint his shoulder pad here, his right shoulder pad. I don't remember the armor term for it. I knew before class started. <laughs> so I'm just, Oh, the other thing about metallics is they tend to clog a little bit more readily than regular paints because, well, they've got more stuff in them. So there's more stuff in the bottle to clog the nozzle with. And my wash medium. Oh, I'm gonna leave the dragon copper here. So people can see, there we go. Kind of what we're using. There we go.
Oh, I love dragon copper. It's such a pretty orangey goldish color. I think this is one. Yeah, this is one that's got gold flake in it. We'll just do his right shoulder. So when I was originally preparing for this class, I was like, yeah, when we're done with class, we'll have a completely painted miniature and it'll be awesome. And then I started working on my demo pieces. I'm like, uh, I think I need to be a little bit more realistic. <laughs> so the rest of the miniature will be there for you to, you can either complete it the same way we did in class afterwards, or you can use it to experiment on. Whatever floats your boat. Can I move? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. So I was just putting copper on his shoulder here, his right shoulder. Thank you for letting me know if I, I tend to paint with my, my hands all hunched close to me, which is much closer than the camera is. So it's also absolutely terrible posture. Or sometimes I will lean uh, sitting back with my, my elbows braced on my stomach and my, my forearms up against my chest, especially when I'm trying to do something small like eyes. All the bracing for eyes. <laughs> Okay, let's see where we're at. Oh, we're about, let's see, we're about halfway through. Yes, we're halfway through. We're doing great on time. Okay. In just a sec. Oh, I almost forgot. Once you are done with that, go ahead and grab your favorite color. In this case, it's Desna Blue for me. And we're just going to paint the cloth on the front of his tunic here. I was originally planning to do the cloth on all of them, but uh, I think we'll just do the cloth on the front of his tunic here. So whichever color you would like. And we'll use this a little bit later on. I'll show you something really cool you can do with layering metallic paints over a colored base coat. Yeah, so that's a little bit thin. So I did not end up thinning this particular paint just because I knew that it, it's my bottle is kind of thin to begin with. Oh, how much metallic paint am I loading onto my brush? That is a great question. So when I'm getting paint on my brush, I tend to keep it mostly on the, the end third of the brush. I, I rarely go more than halfway up. The reason is uh, this, this part of the brush is mostly what you're going to be using the paint with. It gives you the most control. And also that's where the, the paint is gonna be coming off your brush most is off that, the end there. So anything up higher than that just dries in your brush and gets all crusty and it, it makes your brush splay out and it's hard to clean out. So yep, end third of your brush, but uh, no more than halfway. Great question. And since I've got some of this on my brush, I'll just, do a quick second coat on his shield because why waste the paint? Okay, great questions. And there's no blues almost dry. So while it's drying, let's see what is next. Okay, so once you're done with your cloth, 
The next thing we'll be using is our steel wash. And while this is drying, let's talk about washes just a little bit. So washes are really cool because you can use them to not only change the color of whatever you're, you're painting them over, but they will settle into the crevices of what you're working on. Now, I think that wash is actually, it's not a great name for this particular type of paint because you don't, I had to learn this the hard way because when I first started painting, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to literally not, you're not supposed to literally wash your paint with the wash. What you do is, is like I mentioned before, it's fairly thinned paint. You can see it just dripped right out of my bottle. So we're gonna take our wash and just to let you know, we're gonna be working on his right leg where we put the blade steel. So when you're working with a wash, just wanna get a little bit in your brush. You can see it soaked right in. Maybe you can see, there we go. And then you want to dab it off just a little bit on your paper towel. So that means that you can, what's, with what's left in the brush, you'll have better control over where it's going. It won't flood into places you don't want it to go. So I'm gonna take our steel wash, dab it off just a little bit. And then we're going to go over our blade steel. You can either go over the whole thing or you can just use it to go in under these darker areas. So, because I want to make it a little bit kind of darker and bluish, I'm going to go over all of the silver. But like I said, you can use wash to help line the areas that need to be a little bit darker. Another important thing to remember about washes is that you must let them dry completely before painting back over them because otherwise they really like to lift off of whatever you just put them onto. So once you've got your wash on there, and leave it alone. We're gonna let it dry for a good long time while we work on other parts of the miniature. While that is, while you all are working on that, well, let me throw another coat of my Desna Blue on here. Uh, let's say I don't have pre-mixed washes. There's a way that you can make your own wash. You can either mix regular paint with water or you can use ta -da, wash medium. So again, the nice thing about the wash medium is it's a little bit thicker and it helps, you know, to, to I just find that it makes my paint a little bit easier to work with if I use wash medium to make a wash with. So, and as far as like, well, how much wash medium do I put in compared to how much paint? Again, it'll depend on how thick your paint is. I would say start with less because you can always add more. And if it gets too thin, you can add more paint. So painting is all about experimenting and trying new things. And you know, if you're trying to do a very specific technique, yeah, there's a right, there may be a right way and a wrong way to do it, but so much of painting is just, just try it. Like if you mess up, you can paint over it. If you really mess it up, you can just strip the paint off and start over again. No, it's just paint. That's the great thing. So, okay. Did that and that and that. And okay. So let me, oh, I forgot. I painted these nice demonstration minis. So your mini should look like this <laughs> by this point of the class. Oh, so actually that, that, this is a great opportunity to compare. So. On this shield, I use the drow silver. You can see it's very silvery. So there's a lot of that really silver flake in it. Whereas the, the mixture I made with the clear purple and the filigree silver, it's not nearly as shiny. That's because the, uh, you know, it, it's a metallic I made myself and I wasn't using my, my wonderful metal medium, but it's good enough. You know, you can see it is still a bit reflective. It's just not quite as super shiny as the, 
Grouse Silver. Okay. Oh, we've got a question. Let's see. What is the item number for the wash medium? It is, where did I just put it? 09300. Yep. I love this stuff. It's so versatile. Oh, thank you. Yep. And there's a whoops link to it in the chat. And then I throw poor Sir Borskill on the floor. All right. We did that. And where are we at now? Oh, we are at highlighting. So let's say that we want to highlight something that isn't silver. I'm just dropping things all over. And yeah, that can stay on the floor. It's fine. Uh, so some, something I like to do with copper is copper and gold are both very warm metallics. And so they're, they're sort of in the same, I, I'm not very good with color theory terminology. So I don't know if color family is the correct term to use, but they're both sort of yellowy reddish in the, the warm side of things. So if I want to highlight copper, I will use gold. So you can go ahead and pull out your dragon gold. And we're going to highlight his shoulder. Where did my wash medium go? Here we go. So when you're highlighting a smooth curved surface like this, where it's hard to tell, okay, what part of it is actually pointing upwards? Pardon me. So again, you know, I look down from the direction that my light is coming from and it looks like, okay, this, this part right here, oh, there's actually a, a little, little bit of a design right there that will help me know where to put the highlight. Oh, I got too much paint on my brush. I can just, I can feel it. I can feel it because I've done this a lot. So I'm going to dab off a little bit. And, and remember, you can always go back and add more paint. It makes it a little bit harder to get rid of paint that you didn't want on your miniature. So I'm going to use the gold just on the, oops, sorry, just on the top of his shoulder there. If there wasn't a design there, it would be a little bit easier to tell that I'm just doing it on the, uh, top part and you want to use little short strokes because you don't want a line there we go I, I don't know if you can see on the camera there's a there's a line there between the gold and the copper and that's not what we want here we want it to be just a little bit fuzzy so just just going to use little short fuzzy strokes and if you ever have a chance or have or have taken a class from Ian Markon, he is he is wonderful in teaching how to blend. Highly recommend his classes. Okay, let's see if we're got any more questions. Nope. Okay. Okay, we got 30 minutes left. Good, good. Okay, so once we're done with the shoulder, we're going to go back with our blade steel. And we're going to go back over most of the areas that we put the wash over, because you can see that since I put the wash on the silver, it made it really kind of dull. Like it's not very shiny anymore. Maybe that's the look I want. If I want, you know, let's say that it's old tarnished uh, coins or, you know, it's, it's a shield that's been you know, through a lot of battles or something, maybe I don't want it to be bright and shiny. Well, then I could just leave it like that and then just do a little bit of highlighting on the the the, the edges and the, the top here. But I want this to be a newer armor. So let's see, I need a new paint palette. That one's all full. There we go. So get our blade steel again. 
and a rush medium to thin it there. There we go. Mix it up. Okay, and because I want the wash to leave the wash in the darker areas, I'm just going to use this on the. You know, I'm going to use kind of the same principles as if I were wanting to just highlight this piece. So I'm just going to hit the the edges and the tops of these plates here just to brighten them up a bit. Um, right like that. This is a little bit easier with a uh, bigger, bigger uh, armor plates. A little tricky on the smaller ones. But there aren't a whole lot of miniatures that have both plate armor and chain mail, so didn't have a lot of options for which miniature to use. Into the top of this foot, the top of this little plate across his ankle here, and the front of his shin. And kind of the, the top of his calf, a little bit right there. Share my camera. Okay. Any more questions? Nope. Okay. Uh, that. Okay. Let's see, are there any questions, concerns? Anybody having trouble with anything? Any questions? Feel free to put them in the chat or you can come in and ask me later. Okay. So let's see, we've done I did the copper and the blade steel is drying. So let's look at his sword. So let's say I wanted to highlight gold. So I could either get an even brighter gold, which there, there aren't a whole lot of golds that are brighter. I lighter, I should say, than the dragon gold. Um, dragon bronze uh, works decently well. But for this, because I didn't put dragon bronze on the on the class list because I'm like, well, I want to have people buy a bottle of paint for like five seconds of demonstration. We're going to mix dragon gold with our filigree silver. And the ratio I found works pretty well for this is mixing two drops of dragon gold to one drop of filigree silver. Or do I ever not use dry brushing and chain mill? Um, I suppose if I really wanted to take a, uh, you know, a good amount of time, I could go in and paint each ring. But the problem is that on a lot of miniatures, uh, the chain mail is sculpted by poking whole little holes in uh, the underlying uh, clay or you know whatever the the sculptor is using brain stuff I guess and so you know trying to paint it on regularly I find just gets a little bit frustrating you know I could paint it all silver and then do a wash but then I would but then I usually will then go and dry brush the highlights back on so dry brush it really works nicely for for chain mail at least I, I've found so good question. Okay, so I don't know why I shake these up. I just shook them up like five times. Okay, we're going to take two drops of our dragon gold and one drop of our filigree silver. Okay. 
And a little bit of a wash medium here. And so swords are a little bit tricky because, you know, if we assume that the light is uh, coming from above, and let's say his, his sword was pointing straight up, like uh, here's one with the, the sword is straight. So which side do I highlight? Well, uh, let's say that I want to put the, I guess it's easier to put the, the light source at a slight angle rather than immediately right above it. And so in this case, I would highlight um, one edge of the sword. So we're going to highlight just this leading edge here with our mixture. And because I'm mixing the dragon gold into it, it will still be yellowish, but it will be a little bit silvery as well. So you will see that it's still golden, but it's sort of a, a brighter, closer to white golden just on that edge there. I don't know if the camera will play nicely with it. Uh, a little bit. It's just like, it's shiny. What more do you want? OK. While it's drying, it, I just saw a question pop up. Let's see what's going on here. I've heard of people base coating metal with filigree silver and putting the desired color on top. If, is there a reason to do that rather than two coats of the top color? Um, oh, so like, uh, so doing the, the metallic and then glazing a color over the top. Uh, so actually I'm going to be discussing that more in my uh, colored metallics class on Sunday. Um, but since we've got a little bit of time, yeah, we can, we can talk about that. So, I'll just I'll do a I'll do a demonstration on the back of his shield here. So this is for demonstration purposes. So put my filigree silver on. I'll do a nice thin coat so it'll dry quickly. I mean, slightly quicker than usual. I'm in Easter Washington, but it's which is pretty dry to begin with. So Let's say that I've got my silver and I want to make it a different, I want to tint it a different color. So then I will make what I uh, mentioned at the beginning of class is a glaze. So here we go. Let's grab my clear purple. So for glazes, as with washes, I find that the Reaper clears work really well. So I'm going to take my clear here and I'm going to thin it fairly aggressively. So let's start with three drops of wash medium. And a good test to see whether your glaze is thin enough is, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, people describe it as it's like skimmed milk. And, you know, if you do this with it, it'll do, you know, it'll run back down. But I, I always struggled with uh, those. So, a trick that uh, Rhonda Bender, or no, wait, was it Rhonda? Yeah, I think it was Rhonda, uh, said is, so take something that's printed. <laughs> These are my class notes, welcome to them. So take a little bit of your mixture, dab it off just a touch, and then paint it over something that's printed. You, you can see that it, it tinted the text, but I can still read through it. So that's, that's a pretty good, uh, there we go. So it's still a little bit uh, thicker than, well, not thicker. There's still a little bit more color than, than would be usual for glazes, but I don't have 30 minutes to spend doing multiple coats. So this will do for demonstration purposes. So I'll take my, my glaze here and I will, I don't know if the camera can see that. It's just barely purple. 
And under ideal circumstances, I would let this dry completely. And then I would do another impact. Let me just do a really messy wet coat real quick, just to show you. So ideally you would build your glaze up with multiple thin coats, but you can see it's getting a little bit purple. So that is another way that you can do a colored metallic. I have mentioned before though, I'm a little bit lazy and I like to paint quickly. So I just, you know, I don't oftentimes have the patience for glazing. It is a wonderful technique and there's a lot you can do with it. But yep, there we go. Okay. Wonderful question. Oh, and there's a link to my class info for Sunday. Yes, if you want to play with shiny metallic paints and colors, come to my class on Sunday. We'll have a lot of fun. Uh, it is marked as intermediate. That's only because you know, I, it requires a little bit more understanding of how paint works because we're going to be mixing a lot of different things. But you know, if you're a beginner, uh, I do try to structure the class so that you can still get a lot out of it. I wish that there was like a beginner slash intermediate option, but there wasn't. So yeah. Okay. So let's see, where were we? Let's see, we, okay. We highlighted the edge of the sword. Oh, okay. So his leg should be dry now. So we went back over it with the blade silver and the blade steel, excuse me. Let's say that I want to make his leg even more shiny. So I'll take my filigree silver. And we're just going to do some little tiny highlights just to really show people how shiny it is. All right. So I'll put a little dot of this. Uh, the metallic medium is also really great for this because it, it acts like a white. So you can just do a little, yeah, the filigree of silver doesn't work quite as well. We put a little, little dot there. We'll do a little, little line down the spines of these plates here. And then on this little bit on top of his ankle, and just a little bit on the top of his foot, not too much. Well, actually, I guess we can do a little bit more there. So, yeah, the, <laughs> the camera is like really struggling. It's like it, it's just it's just all shiny. I made I made the dot on his knee fairly big so that you'll be able to see it. But yeah, that. <laughs> this is what makes photographing metallic paints so difficult is because they reflect the light. And so um, if you are struggling with that, as I still struggle with it, uh, Doug Sunsith uh, is, he's on the, the Reaper forums actually. And he is a professional photographer and he's given me a lot of advice and tips about how to photograph metallics. So. I unfortunately don't have time to really get into that and I would do a poor job of explaining it. So uh, I would recommend asking the expert. Okay, let's see. While that is drying, I saw a question. Do you agree that when painting something metallic, one should not mix metallic and non-metallic paints? It has to be all of one or all of the other. Another excellent question, Daniel. So everybody just wants to skip to my other class. This is great. So that gets into what is called the demi metallics and demi metallics are very tricksy. So demi metallics, I enjoy working with because it makes me feel like a mad scientist. You'll do a lot of experimenting, a lot of mixing things and a lot of things won't work. So let's see, actually, how are we doing on time? Uh, we've got time. Yeah, we got some time. Let's let's do a, a quick demo metallic. Let's see. Oh, here we go. We'll try two different blues so I can show you what I mean about uh, about having to really experiment. So let's say that you don't have the Reaper clears, or let's say you've got a you know a different color that you really want to make it a metallic of it. So I've got a uh, 
a light blue, glacier blue here, and ultramarine shadow. These are just two colors I randomly grabbed. So I can tell that the glacier blue is going to have a lot of white in it. And remember, white eats up our shiny. So let's see, this is probably going to be clogged. Yep. That's what happens when you move and you don't paint for a few months. All of your paints get clogged. Okay, there's my glacier blue. Whoa, that was a lot of blue. That's okay, we'll make it work. And my ultramarine shadow is, yep, also clogged. One moment. Okay, so, um, and let's say, oh, here we go. Let's use blade steel. I usually like using silvers for my demo metallics just because the silvers are a little bit more translucent. So uh, the thing to remember about demo metallics is that the color of whatever metallic you use, it will affect your mixture. So you can pair blade steel and um, let's see, actually, let's go with pearl white. So you can see that blade steel and pearl white, you can pair the two, blade steel is a very gray metallic. And so when you're mixing, you have to remember that that tone, that, that color will affect your final mixture. So it'll make it more gray than if I used a different metallic. Okay, so here's my glacier blue, and you can see that, you know, my, my resulting mixture has got a little bit of sparkle, but it, you know, and it, it kind of ate my metallic up, and it's kind of a desaturated blue, and eh, I don't really like that. So if I wanted to make a metallic with this color, I would either, you know, do a layering with it uh, or a glaze. Or I would uh, maybe look into mixing a darker blue with my metal medium to make a light blue. Whereas my ultramarine shadow here, I could tell did not have nearly as much white in it. You can see, oh yeah, that is a that is a nice uh, rich dark blue. Yeah, that that's the that's a color I want to use. So. I just happened to look out. I'm like, please make this one work the first time because if they both turned out the same, then it wouldn't defeat the purpose of a demonstration. So yes, so demo metallics. Come to my class on Sunday if you uh, if we want to get into that more. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I totally misunderstood your question. <laughs> so you're referring to something like using a non-metallic paint on top of a metallic paint. Um, Again, that, that goes back to glazing, really. Oh yes, demo metallics are super cool. <laughs> I was getting all excited. Uh, so again, if you're using a non-metallic paint that has a lot of white in it to do a glaze, it's going to hide your metallic. So bear that in mind. So, okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. So we're going to finish up our, our last little example here and you know, if you have any more questions, uh, be thinking of and, and show, throw them in the chat and I'll answer them if I've got time. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is, we already kind of did this before. I'm running, I didn't expect to be mixing this much in this class. This is my last clean palette. <laughs> okay, so we are going to take our blade steel and so I, uh, I did a demonstration of uh, doing colored, you know, the, my clear purple over a metallic. What if I wanna put a metallic over a colored base coat? So I'm gonna take my blade steel, I'm going to thin it a bit more than I would for just regular use, because I'm going to make a wash with my blade steel. I could thin it even further, but again, 
don't really have time for glazing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember how you, I told you to put your favorite color paint on his cloth here. We're going to make that shiny. We're going to take, now remember washes, you don't want to bathe your miniature in it. So I'm going to dab off the extra. And we're going to just do a thin coat of silver over this color here. So this is actually my favorite part of this class because everybody's turns out totally differently. So because nobody can see each other, I went ahead and did that for you. So let me clear my, my area here. And I've got some elf friends here to show you what happens. And um, in this case, it's a all different metallics. I'm putting them upside down so that the light catches them a little better. There's a green one and orange and white. White does very interesting things to metallics because it, they are not quite as reflective. They almost look sort of more in a, an enamel look. White, <laughs> these have been in a baggie. So some of their swords are a little curled. So yeah, so don't be afraid to play with color. So this is one I like putting a, a pale blue underneath silver. It turns, it may, the result is kind of a frosty color. And putting red under gold or copper makes it really nice and warm. And let me show you the orange under the copper. It makes it like a really bright, bright new penny kind of orange. You know, if you put blue under your silver, it's going to make it a much colder silver as opposed to when I put yellow, yellow under it, you can see it's much, much brighter, much warmer. So, all right, I think, let me double check that that's all I've got planned. Okay, yeah, so if we had time, I was going to go back and uh, pick out the uh, details on his shield, but we're a bit out of time here. So I'll just show you that. Uh, so I went back with my copper. Uh, this is a uh, one that I finished before class and just picked out those details. So you can use another metallic, you could put a base coat of a regular metallic and then go over it, or sorry, of a regular paint and then go over it with silver or, you know, whatever, floats your boat. So, all righty, are there, any last questions or comments? Let's see. Green provides a good dark contrast color to balance out the metal brightness. Yeah. So yeah, you trying different colors under your base under your metallics uh, is is really, you know, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with it. So I will sometimes use uh, the base of a miniature. Like here we go. I'll use a base of a miniature to test things out on. So I was seeing what silver did over these three different colors. Uh, I've got so many bones figures. Sometimes I will just grab a bones figure and practice weird things on it. Yeah. I've used them for experimenting with a number of things. So he's very colorful. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid to experiment, try new things. What was the mix with the silver again? Uh, the, the one that we just did for the wash, Oh yes, so um, I did blade steel and wash medium. I think I did two drops of the wash medium, I wanna say. So, okay, all righty. So thank you everybody so much for coming. I, I hope that, so whenever I teach a class, I always try to, I hope that my students get three things out of the class. I hope that they had fun. I hope that they learned at least one new thing. And most important, I hope that they are not afraid to try new things because that's, that's how you learn. You try new things. And, and to quote Ms. Frizzle, uh, I probably will get the quote wrong, but it's, uh, is it uh, get excited, make mistakes and, and get messy, I think is, is what it is. So let's see. Oh, good. I'm so glad that, that uh, 
you all had a good time and uh yep if you've uh got any further questions you can come find me in discord and i'm i'm happy to to answer them so thank you very much oh code thank you for reminding me so there is the code for my little boot emoticon you can uh join my 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 boot squad you can put a little boot next to your next to your name <laughs> So again, thank you all for coming. This class could not happen without you because otherwise I'd be sitting by myself and talking to my monitor and looking crazy. So <laughs> the boot brigade. Oh, I like that. So, all right. Oh, the Q and A. Oh, I'm trying to make soot stains on bronze. Any suggestions that are reasonable to explain in the remaining time? Uh, sorry, I missed your, your question before Francis. So um come find me in discord because that's a little bit more involved of a of an answer that gets more into weathering techniques and so i yeah come find me in discord and i'll i'll explain that a little bit more in depth so all right thank you again bye I'm gonna Shut things down now. Okay. Oh, do I have to stop the recording? There we go. Yes.